Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have gameplay from Zarella showing off why, well, quite frankly, Eliza is just the strongest card in this game. Absolutely bar none the best card to hit in this game in the vast majority of lobbies. And that's because you don't only bring direction to the game, you immediately become strong. You bring tempo, you bring direction, and you don't even have to level ever again. Get that Eliza, go look for Tony, play toward Kagar Baron Scallywag, you know what this looks like. It just turns into Exodia Pirates every time, and there's very little people can do about it in the mid game. It really comes down to just, can you future proof yourself for late game, get a hold of Blood Gems, eventually play toward either a Ghoul line or play toward the Taunted line, and then just make yourself unzappable. Sure, in the very, very, very late game, there are some counterplays, but most of the time you stomp everybody before they can even get to that point. All right, enjoy. and take a triple I see I don't want that but you know because this is net positive gold or net, net positive stats for the 2-2 two -two instead of 1-1 one -one. but normally you could buy it if we wanted it okay I see Eliza I see a scallywag that feels pretty decent Casual turn six, Eliza. But yeah, this is a very good, very, very good hit. In order of hits, it was probably Dark Gaze, Eliza, Genie, then Coiler. Genie and Coiler being, Genie being economy and tempo, Coiler just being a recovery tool when we try to go to six in two turns. Eliza is obviously the nuts when it comes to tempo and pseudo direction. That's not the hit. That wasn't it. Some would say, not the hit. All right, it's a lot of one ones with Eliza potentially value trading. Never mind. Just jump straight into the fire, Eliza. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I didn't want you to be on the board anyway. It's cool. No, 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 it's cool. Mm hmm No. Why would I expect anything different? I see. I mean, <laughs> they are all so good. Uh-huh. So I probably like the pale scale, right? That's a lot of stats considering we have two beasts on the board and we're playing Scallywag. Do you ever take Kaggar as well? Like at this stage of the game, I'm taking this pale scale. I'd sell three. I mean, you just sell Gambler. It's not like it's useful to me right now. Go 
Because I'm not going to be playing into this. Like I'm going to open a space for Scallywag. <clears throat> Excuse me. You bald? Yeah, I'm bald. Yeah, bro. The baldest. <coughs> and dying, apparently. One second. Don't mind me, I got all choked up. It was a hard question. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying of baldness. It's critically bad. Fatal. I think we're about to be future proofing a bullshit board. And uh, being pretty happy about it. I'm not gonna lie. I see, I see. Could triple sell for the brute. I don't see a real reason to do that. Looks to me like we're sitting pretty. We have a little bit of an issue here with uh, Cleave that we don't have a good way to counterplay it. We could lose a Khadgar, but I think we'd just sacrifice the Pale Scale if that's the case. Oops, suddenly Scally count. Yep, very much. Suddenly, Scallies. And the bold and the beautiful? Oh my god. I really wanted to be on a soap my whole life. I'm living the dream. Truly, this is the end times. He dodged an 80% lethal, then stabilized. Good for him. So we go for Tony, right? Like, Tony, Baron, Golden Khadgar, another Scallywag, not go up. Mm -hmm. At least we have the Scally. Not gonna, not gonna hear power it, whether it be one health. I see. Can bang gold. No. So all that's left to discuss is why did it make four? Cat guard doesn't require space on board. Yeah. Cat guard requires space on board. Same way that it always has. We can make you bigger, I guess. This is probably better. Not like it's really that big of a deal here. I'm very tempted to just not do it. Just not. Can we try just not? Play double Scally. Just drop the Alley Cat, lose the synergy. I mean, we could drop the Pale Scale because this is a 1 1 bigger. I guess that's true. If we triple the Khadgar, we don't need that buff. We're going to need the Zargus. If I buff the Necrolite on the Khadgar, then we make both of these Khadgars into bigger minions. Future proof or zap proofing ourselves right now, which I'm not too concerned about. But in the future, we oftentimes triple this Khadgar and we don't need to buff both of them. Boo. 
Boo! That was a good hit for him. Not quite enough, but you know, still pretty good. Yeah, this is not true, Tolrin. What has to happen is every duplicated copy needs an open space when it occurs. So like it occurs immediately, but you need an open spot. I should hear about this, what am I doing? Every time. So as soon as the scallywag stops dying, you still, you lose the rest of the train. Or chain. It's a hard one, the word, I guess. Mm-hmm. Where are my Tonys? Where are my Barons? There's my Baron. There's my Baron. If we were worried about Ghoul, then we could start with the uh, Khadgar and not the Baron, but we're not going to play toward Ghoul here. Even though it's right in front of our eyes, Ghoul version is almost always inferior. The ghoul version is absolutely trash against good players. Like, I think, who was it? Was it Jakiric that wrote up the big thing about, about Scally optimization a while back? I should really find that one to link to you guys. Because it's way better without, without uh, ghoul on the board. You can basically counterplay everything this way. Baron does not need extras, but Baron being your death rattles trigger twice, right? So your death rattle basically just triggers a second time right after the first one does. Triggers once, Sky, Sky Pirate spawns, attacks, dies, and then triggers a second time. Khadgar duplicates a minion, which means there needs to be this open spot. This thing spawned, and this one's duplicating it. Then the other one duplicated the other. Now this one spawned, and Khadgar duplicated it. Now the other Khadgar triggers duplicating that first thing that came up. Now this one spawns, or this one's actually the second duplication, I should say, here. And then duplication, then the new one spawned. Now we're out of them at that point. So basically spawn, dupe, 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 dupe from the other ones. Because the trick Khadgars see the other thing spawn something and then dupes that one as well. It's just multiplicative. Oh, and of course, we will blow up Bob twice. As is tradition, since Khadgars on the board. And Baron, so we blow him up there too. All right, unless we get to Tony, I don't think we ever get first place off of this board. We've got what we've gotten, you know, or we get to Golden Khadgar. Now, we're not going to play Torterikosa. Golden Bearing, Khadgar, Golden Khadgar, like there's a little something there. It's pretty good to hold the gold here, right? Because as soon as we buy a Khadgar, we're on the clock to find something else to replace on the board. Having 15 gold in one turn or 16 gold in one turn is better than having 16 gold spread across two turns. It's not, it's just understanding out order of operations. It's not that complicated. True. It's just the order in which things occur. Minion dies, minion spawns. The first thing that happens is that a Sky Pirate attacks. In the mid sequence of the Sky Pirate attacking, Khadgar duplicates something. That's why it, it duplicates and then like does that animation. The, the minion spawning then in turn spawns another minion because the Khadgar sees it. Tony is better now. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to have Tony. But we don't have enough ability to even truly play that. Like we'd have to get it this turn. You could play one gambler through to try to do it. Maybe you could make that work. It'd be pretty tough to justify though. This is a trade-off for sure, though. There's so many frogs! Stop frogging on us, bro.
Good try. Good try. Getting the cat girl off the board would be real nice. No? Okay. We'll just spawn all the things. It's cool. Not really that big of a deal, considering that we're about out of the scally attacks anyway. Now we have a full board. I think that's going to do just fine. It's got to be one hell of a coiler. It was not. <laughs> uh, getting the bird buddy was nice. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was fine. It was almost always fine. In fact, deck trackers are notoriously bad at calculating scallywag. I think there are very few failure outcomes there. Hmm. I like the zap proof. Should hear about it. I'm just not a smart person. Well, I'm going to do this. He had Kagura on the board, right? But he had Scallywag too. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Terracurse is a little interesting, considering we don't have anything else to put into place. I really don't want a Charlie. We want Tony, we want Khadgar. Are we getting desperate yet? Are we scared, chat? How scared are we? A little bit. Instead of spawning 16 Sky Pirates, we'll spawn 12 this time. So we're a little bit weaker this turn. Murrah not worth the 1 in 7 for Khadgar? Yep, and it's also a 1 in 7 for a Sky Pi or a Scallywag. One of them seems really bad. No, don't get me wrong. There's a, a thought on the risk assessment there, but it's definitely not as easy as one gold for a shot at a Khadgar. Those are pretty good opening hits. One of these trades right quickly, and we'll get to keep the extra minion on the board too. Yeah, he's got to be really careful about the one bad outcome too. My God, it's so big. <laughs> All right, tie it is. We actually had the, the win on a 50-50 there. All right. We are believers here in chat. Eh. <laughs> I want it. Believe. Believe. I was believing. I was a believer. I mean, we're still at 30. We future proof nicely. We are zappable if uh, we only get a Khadgar. Are we zap proof this turn? I mean, we're zap proof this turn. But we need like one more good Khadgar. What point is Tony too late? I mean, at the moment, it would go on the board, right? I imagine once we get Golden Khadgar, or a second Khadgar, or another Khadgar, I should say, and we're not fighting a ghost, it's probably too late. Nice Elder? Dude, talked about this being a great card earlier. If we get, say for example, next turn, we're at top three-ish, we're not fighting a ghost, then we're not going to drop Tony on the board unless... We don't have Khadgar. If we have Khadgar, go for it. Coin flip him game. Coin flip him to death. The flippening. 
All right, can we just stop hitting the Terragosa? Could we chill on the hitting of the Terragosa, please? <laughs> I mean, that's not half bad. Considering that now he doesn't attack with the Terragosa and the other things tend to die. So we get, the, like, the extra attack. All right, well, these are... These are very awkward hits. I see. I will take a tie. What about Nami? No, no, only Tony's. Tony! The tiger! He's great. I'm sorry, it wasn't enough emphasis on that. He's great. Yeah, we're not leveling this turn. Next turn we probably will. Even if we don't, like, we have no reason to go to six other than seeing an extra spot on the board, but for one gold, it's worthwhile. I see. I see. Fresh out of Cadgars. That's where we are. We're fresh out of Cadgars. No more Barons, no more Cadgars. You make money leveling next turn? I mean, you utilize or you see more board spaces leveling next turn. Don't exactly make money, but we see more boards hard rolling next turn by leveling than not leveling. What if it turns a sky pirate golden? Then you have a golden sky pirate. Not much else to say about that. Like we did this the other day where we got a late Tony. And we got Golden Sky Pirate, Golden Sky Pirate, and finally Golden Eliza in the exact same combat. Like, in the same sequence of the, the Scallywags going off. Oh, look! He's doing it too! But he also has Giant Taunt. I like our minions deciding to go right. That's kind of cool. Sky pirate. Stop it. Sky pirate. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> He's doing the same thing. Not even close. All right. Feels good, man. Yeah, odds are just all kinds of bonkers for Skelly. Now we just go find find uh, Khadgar. We can play Mura for sure. <sighs> My dude. Was good. What's happening? How are you? All right, we should have leveled. What am I doing? Why am I not leveling? I just, I lose my train of thought. We should be leveling. I got excited. I saw the Khadgar. Like, can you blame me? Like, man, that's the Khadgar. That's the thing we're looking for. I should have leveled for sure. It's a little interesting to consider that uh, if they play specific ways to counter us, that ghoul could be useful. I don't think I freeze for it by any means. I got so excited. I know. I was, I was, I was so excited. I was like, oh my god, we got the thing. I'm going to forget about the thing I said at the end of the last turn. And I rolled a bunch of times and went, well, shit. Longest Exodia game ever? Turn 15. Not super light. But now, how many Sky Pirates, if we do not have them stop the Sky Pirate train, we get 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 24. Ha! Huh, joke's on you. Big Zap doesn't do shit. The Zap being bigger doesn't fix the problem. 
<laughs> problem wasn't the size of the zap. It was the size of the targets. Oh, look at him go. That is a large zap. But in the end, its size was not the determining factor. Is he an acolyte? He'd need a little more than one acolyte. Because he would just kill a, sp a sky pirate on the second hit, and then we'd spawn the entire combo afterwards. Like, we beat him off of one scallywag, right? So, like, he needs more than a single acolyte. He needs, like, two acolytes in an open board space, or something like that would have done it. I guess health is more important. Oh, wait, we hear it powered the other one. I should have hear powered it. What am I saying? Now, let's leave Zap in the pool so they play Zap. Bait Zap is still in the pool. Really no reason to ever play this, right? The only thing we do from this point forward is play toward Ghoul if we want to transition and then like drop a, the taunts off the Scallies by buying those. Or play Golden Kagar. Could argue Selfless. That if he's built in a way that we need to play for an extra set of bodies here, you could play it in front. But small taunt is what he has to do to beat us. And right now we can't really counterplay small taunt. If he drops down like one Terracosa and then goes for like two acolytes and six board spot or and seven board spots. I mean, that's a small minion that helps, but it's only one small minion. We have to get really unlucky here. Apparently it's not even possible, but I thought there's a possibility that we could hit that and then immediately into this might be enough where it would live. I guess not. It's not enough. Smaller taunt, safer taunt. I said one more and I'm like, it's been a good day, you know? It's just, it's just one of those days where you're just happy playing Hearthstone. And I gotta say one of those days because they just don't happen that often, you know? Most of the time you stop playing and you're like, well, this is dumb. <laughs> uh, today, today we had good games. You can't help but laugh. Can't help but smile. Finish it off with like a nearly full gold and Exodia Pirate. So happy for you? Thanks, dude. It was a fun one. We need more fun days. I think Bob wants you to get two triple barons. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he's got a chuckle. Ah, he for, he survived the barrage. Unfortunately, there were four 150s on the board at the end. Feels good Friday. For once, it wasn't clickbait on the title. 58. It's going down. 12.5 though. Hey, we weren't 12k when we started today, and now we're 12.5. Damn. Got some dragon wins. Some poison scams. Uh, Exodia pirate. Uh, my god. Plus 547 in 12 games. That's a streak. We finally got past the 12k bottleneck. Until next stream, when we somehow end up 11k again.